Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2014 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEEF. And right now I'm with Tim Puckett of Apogee Imaging Systems. I think Apogee and Tim Puckett are two names that need very little introduction in the world of astrophotography. If you look at some of the finest images that are being taken today, they are being done with Apogee equipment. I've been at these events in the past. Tim and I have spoken a lot of times, but you've got some news to tell me about. Well, we've got some exciting news. Uh, Apogee Imaging has been uh, acquired by Andor Technology, which is a very high-end maker of CCD cameras, scientific CMOS cameras, uh, really an industry leader in uh, scientific imaging. Where are they located? Uh, they're located in Belfast, Ireland. So what does this mean for your customers? I think it's going to give increased added benefit to our current customer experience. As far as uh, existing customers, their warranties are going to be honored. Uh, there's going to be no changes there. Uh, I think as far as the customer experience goes with uh, the benefit of the products, the stability uh, will be just as good or better. Uh, we're going to have uh, additional repair facilities in other places as well as the United States, so uh, it'll be good for international customers as well as U.S. customers. They'll have local areas where they can send their cameras to if they need any type of work? Our European customers uh, will have now uh, a place to send their cameras. In the past, Apogee systems were only repaired in the United States. Uh, now, Apogee imaging system cameras and technology will have multiple repair sites, so it should give more benefit to the customer experience. Great. So where are the cameras now going to be made? Belfast, Ireland. In fact, let me tell you about the trip I just took to Belfast in January. Uh, in January, I spent several weeks at the Belfast facility. I was really impressed by the professionalism and just the large-scale factory they had there for quality control. Uh, I got to see look through the window of the clean room. Uh, it really is a really state-of-the-art facility. Um, as far as the quality for the Apogee cameras, I feel like the uh, legacy of Apogee is definitely going to continue under the Andor tutelage. Um, I think that the quality has been good. I think it's only going to get better. That's great. So other things this could mean for customers? I think the other things that it's going to mean for the customers is it's going to be a, a faster lead times, more stock. Uh, we should have more presence in the market. Uh, more dealerships. There's going to be a lot of growth in the area for Apogee as a whole. And I feel like the legacy of the product is, is definitely going to continue and will uh, we'll be here for a long time to come. Great. So we're going to take a look at some of the things you brought here to the show? Absolutely. Let's start with the Ascent cameras. Um, these have anywhere from 1.4 megapixels to 28.8 megapixels. A lot of different CCDs. They have uh, TrueSense and Sony Interline CCDs in them. All right. so. Now, for a lot of people, TrueSense is a new name. That used to be Kodak. Well, it was Kodak's imaging division. Uh, it's now named TrueSense. Now TrueSense. Okay. Uh, the Sony sensors are a little bit lower noise. The Kodaks are a little more noise. But uh, it, when you're cooling these Interline sensors, you know, minus 10, minus 20, they actually do very good for astronomy. So, it's a nice compact camera. Um, one thing you can note about this is it also has an interface port for a filter wheel. So you only have one cable that's required for this uh, camera. So Filter wheel clips right on, plugs right in. Exactly. And if you turn it sideways, you can see that uh, it has a 6-volt interface, it has a USB, and has a TTL for firing. All right, what next? Well, let's go ahead and go back to something that we've been producing for quite a number of years now, and that's our Alta product. Alta is still made today. Uh, it's a very mature product. It's been around for at least eight or nine years. This will take the large CCDs. It takes the large CCDs. Uh, typically, the Altas have several different body sizes. Uh, they have a D2 body, a D6 body, a D7 body, etc. And so the larger the number, uh, the larger the size of the body, and actually the larger the sensor you can put in the camera. All right. This has got obviously heavy-duty cooling. This one has standard cooling. 
uh, we make a we used to make a higher cooling model that had a larger heat sink on the back. It was thicker, but we felt that there needed to be a new product that uh, had deeper cooling. That was a default system that had hi higher cooling by default, which is uh, a different series. This series has a two-stage thermoelectric cooler, uh, where the Scent series, which we just looked at, has a single-stage cooler. All right. Uh, these have two-stage cooling. Your TTL inputs, outputs. Uh, this is a 12-volt system. Uh, has uh, a 63 millimeter shutter or a 25 millimeter shutter. Uh, there are several different shutter sizes you can put in it, depending on the size of the CCD. All right. So good. Good. Uh, next is the Aspen camera. Uh, we have a basically a D2 size body again. This is called a G02 body. Uh, we have a G1, a G2, G7 body. Same as the others, the larger the number means the bigger the chips they can handle. Uh, this camera has USB 2 and it has a 2 megahertz ethernet port. Uh, what's interesting about this is for university customers that may need to make very long runs or remote addressable systems or for an astronomer that may need a long cable run up to a, an observatory or a second story, uh, this would have an IP addressable Ethernet address where they could talk to it as a web server. So in other words, if you've got a home network or any Ethernet network, you can just plug this camera in. You don't have to have the computer local to the camera. Any place else on the network, you can have the computer that can talk to and operate this camera. That's correct. Another thing I want to mention is it has external shutter sync. So uh, if you are using an application where you needed to put a shutter, say, inside a baffle tube or extend it away from the camera, you could actually plug into here and have an external shutter that would fire the shutter externally. Uh, you have your status indicator lights. Uh, these systems run on 12 volt power. Um, what type of cooling can you get on that? The cooling across the Aspen platform is about minus 65. It really depends on the size of the CCD. Uh, let me show you a different system now, which is, uh, this is a G1. Let's go to a G7 system. Um, in the G7 system, this uses much larger sensor. Uh, it's a 37 millimeter size sensor with a 52 millimeter diagonal. Uh, this also has a copper uh, pin sink. It's a longer, deeper sink. Uh, it adds a couple of pounds of weight to the package. Uh, still has all the same features, the Ethernet port, the USB port. By the way, Dennis, let me uh, mention another point, and that is, is that this camera has a dual interface. It's user selectable by the customer. You can either select the Ethernet interface or the USB, but one at a time. Uh, this would be good for customers that have long cable runs uh, with a two, me 2 megahertz interface. On the USB side, uh, you can run faster uh, downloads with the USB port. If you have a computer nearby where you can run over a standard length USB cord, USB 2.0. As far as our filter wheels, we still carry all the filter wheels we always carry. We have the 7, 9, 10 position filter wheels. We also carry a smaller line of filter wheels for the ascent uh, cameras. All right, so which is this one? This is one of your big Alta filter wheels or Aspen filter wheels. One thing we need to differ differentiate here is that the Alta and Aspen will both use this filter wheel. One thing that you need to be aware of is that depending on the type of camera you have, you'll have a different bolt circle. So if you have an Aspen or an Alta, you may have a different, uh, be the same plate, it'll just have bolts in a different place for the fitting on the camera. All right. So this will handle the big 50 millimeter filters for the 16803 chip. How many position wheel is this? Uh, this one holds 10 positions. So 10. So you've got filter wheels that, would you say there were 5, 7, 9, 10? you got square filters, you take 50 millimeter round filters and smaller filters for the smaller cameras. That's correct. All right, and there's a, what people can't see on the inside here, but I know exists, is a very nice mechanical system that ratchets these filters into exactly the same spot each time they've been rotated around. That's right, for four or five years we've had a ratcheting system inside of all of our filter wheels that allow precise positioning for photometric analysis and. Uh, making sure that the dust stays in the same spot. So that you can make a flat field and it will return the dust to the exact same spot. Absolutely. All right, very good. All right, well listen, I want to thank you very much for telling me about the things you brought here, especially that news about Andor. That sounds like it's going to be very exciting about going forward in the future. Now, if viewers want to get in for more information about any of this equipment, they can go to the website, which is... 
ccd.com. CCD.com, www.ccd.com. That's great, Tim. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Oh, Appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at NEEF 2014.